What's up guys? Paramoto here. We're having some storms here in North Carolina. We had a couple of thunderstorms here. I didn't think I was going to be able to make a video today, but you know, I'm just going to slide right in between these storm fronts. So I got something to talk to you guys about today. So, so about a month ago, a company called ILM reached out to me and said that they wanted to give me a helmet to do a couple videos with. And uh, during the time I was looking up the helmet, different ratings and everything like that. And I realized there's several different ratings and it's very confusing what these ratings mean. The biggest ratings that, is that you're going to come into contact with, oh God, so much gravel. Um, the biggest ratings that you're going to come into contact with um, in America is DOT, ECE, and Snell. What do these ratings mean? Is one better than the other? It's kind of confusing. Nobody really tells you. Quick overview, 30,000 foot up view. DOT is the American standard in helmet ratings. ECE is the European standard in helmet ratings. And Snell is a third party. None of these ratings are better than the other. So like if you say that like, yo, I got the Snell helmet, like dude, my, my noggin is way more protected than your DOT. Like that's just not the case. I had to look up the differences. It kind of seems like every single one of them is good in their own ways. And uh, every single one of them means something that the other one doesn't. And you should probably know it if you're gonna go and make a decision based on ratings, which is why I'm here. There are deer everywhere today. Ooh, they already, do they got horns already? Okay, hunting season's right around the corner for my hunters out there. That's what happens when you ride in the country, you see deer everywhere. DOT is the standard in America. I'll talk about DOT first. So DOT is probably the simplest helmet rating to get. It was established in about 1970 and the rating hasn't really changed much. The standards have not really changed much since 1970 or whatever. Bikes have gotten faster, riders have gotten fatter, there's more traffic, there's more wrecks, and probably more fatalities in general because bikes are going faster. DOT has not changed the standards, which is probably wrong. DOT is also kind of weird because DOT is also the only rating that's almost based on the honor system. Like you can submit your own self-testing to DOT and they'll accept the self-test and let you slap a DOT sticker on the back of your helmet. If they randomly select one of your helmets to get tested and it doesn't actually meet standard, you're big fucked. But at the same point, you know, you can kind of just start your own helmet company and slap a DOT sticker on it and say that it's good. Before we even get into the other tests and everything that they do, you should probably know what the tests actually are. So the tests are pretty much just dropping different anvils onto helmets from different angles. The anvils themselves are literally just things that they drop on the helmet from different heights to simulate different forces. And the anvils are, um, the tools called anvils are also different shapes. Each one of the ratings uses a different shape for some reason. They just, they think that a different shape is more conducive to a real world test. So moving on from there, you have ECE. ECE is the most common accepted helmet rating in the world. So if I went to, you know, Turkey, for instance, this helmet probably wouldn't meet standard because it doesn't have an ECE, it has DOT and Snell rating. I would probably have to rock one of my older helmets to get a different helmet. ECE also comes with a different set of positives and negatives. ECE, explained to me, almost seems like they're cheating. ECE helmets are typically lighter than DOT or Snell helmets, but also ECE kind of like cheats by like knowing what parts of the helmet are gonna get tested and how to prepare for them. So they might make a helmet specifically more rigid or more impact resi resistant in certain areas and leave other areas less protected than if they were just gonna do a simple DOT or even a Snell rating. Which means they can kind of game it a little bit. They can kind of Bill Bell check it a little bit and uh, make a lighter helmet overall, which might give them the upper leg and you know, you know sails and whatnot, you know? But at the same point, a lighter helmet typically, besides for just giving them upper hand and sails, a lighter helmet is actually good. So like, if you were to pendulum your head into something, if you have a lighter helmet that's less weight forcing your head down, which also means less, you know, force impacted on your noggin. It's good to have a lighter helmet for a lot of reasons, as long as it's adequately protected. Think about it like a hammer, you know, the heavier a hammer, the harder that you can hit, you know, same, same kind of thing. The DOT is an older standard than ECE, DOT might, put more forces towards the test. So a helmet might overall be heavier, but also stronger and most likely also cheaper because it's older technology, right? And then it moves on to the third biggest rating. The third biggest rating, which this helmet has, which I was highly impressed on, is Snell. A Snell rating is actually kind of interesting because it's a third party. So a Snell rating is actually a third party rating. It's not 
a government organization which makes it completely different than everything else it's actually a memorial foundation from a race car driver that died they wanted to increase standards for helmet design so less people would die um this predated everything i think snell is one of the oldest helmet ratings the thing about a snell rating is that it's a third party entity that you have to submit your helmet to to get rated so like dot is a lot of the honor system right there's a lot of shenanigans that could happen by the dot ECE, there's a lot of gaming, a lot of cheating that can happen, right? It just, the way it is, we'll just call a spade a spade. And the third one, Snell, there's really almost no cheating that can happen. So if a company submits their helmet to a Snell rating, it means they really stand behind their product, which is why I was so taken back by this helmet being a carbon fiber helmet that's actually Snell rated. It's $300 and it still has a Snell rating. So, I mean, that's a big thing. That's the company, ILM, completely standing behind their helmets i was kind of taken back when uh, this helmet has a snow rating because it's really impressive that anybody gets a snow rating the way that you get a snow rating is that you have to literally design it a whole ass helmet and then you have to submit it to the foundation and then they test it themselves they rip your stuff apart they put it through its battery and then they say that it meets or does not meet its meet standards which I, this helmet does and then furthermore after that snell goes and they pick your helmet straight off the shelves in the storeroom they buy it and then they randomly select it for a test so it's like there's no cheating that you could possibly do there's no cheating that you could possibly do when you have a snell rating because it gets the initial certification and then it gets a continued certification afterwards if you're going to compare any standards together apple to apples snell and dot are probably the closest which everybody is talking about ECE being the best rating for a helmet. Not the case. A lot of people don't really know what they're talking about and they think DOT is the worst, ECE is better, and then Snell is the best. It's not the case. So DOT and Snell are the two closest together. Honestly, I don't think either one is bad. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just not the case. And it's just kind of depending on what you guys think is best for you. I think really when it comes down to it, I've seen some videos from different people like Fortnite that have said like, helmet testing is all kind of kind of nonsense and this and that and i gotta be honest with you i don't think helmet testing is nonsense i don't think that we should be downplaying the safety factor that is of wearing a helmet on a motorcycle i've been down twice and i have been very happy to have a helmet on both times do these forces 100 percent replicate a, a real world world crash you know what probably not but it's better to have a better level of testing and standard to be protecting your head than a lower level my point is saying Fortnite saying like hey you know like all this helmet rating is bs helmets are only tested to 35 miles an hour they're not you know but like i think really when it comes down to it the most important thing is to wear a helmet so i live in a, in a state where it's mandatory to wear a helmet and i think everywhere should be mandatory to wear a helmet just like seat belts are mandatory nationwide it makes no sense why would you not want to wear a helmet it not only protects you it prolongs your riding season by protecting you from weather and all sorts of other things and it makes riding more comfortable in general so these people that don't wear a helmet i think they're kind of dumb i think it's kind of dumb not to wear a helmet at the end of the day ECE, DOT, Snell, wear a rated helmet. Make sure you wear it every single ride, no matter where you are. I was riding in South Carolina. I could have popped my helmet on and just worn some cool guy sunglasses. I chose not to. I chose to continue wearing my helmet because it makes more sense to me. I can flip my visor down and get out of the, the freaking blow dryer air in South Carolina. You guys know, if you guys ride in the South, you know how rough it is when it's like hot air it's like jet wash during a july afternoon in south carolina it's crazy every rating is created equal some ratings are probably better than others it's better to have a rating than not um just because your helmet says dot does not mean it's garbage just because your helmet says ece does not make it the best thing ever i would say the most impressive one is snell snell is always the most rigorous one that's what this helmet is rated to i'm probably going to make sure that i I stick with some sort of Snell rated helmet uh, if I have the choice. If my monetary situation stays the same where, you know, I, I'm blessed enough to be able to afford things that I want generally, um, I will choose a Snell rated helmet 100% of the time. And you know what? A perfect helmet that's got a Snell rating is this carbon black ILM helmet. As I mentioned before, discount code below. There's a discount code below. You'll get 10% off an ILM helmet great quality helmet for the good price 10 percent off is nothing to sneeze at this helmet costs 300 bucks that means you'll get it for 270 dollars for a snow rated carbon helmet weighs next to nothing super comfortable 
love every second of it but anyway guys that's a little information on the ratings i hope this this video helps you guys make a good strong informed decision that's right for you guys um at the end of the day make sure that you're wearing a helmet overall and then make sure that it has some sort of rating that somebody tested it to make sure that uh your head won't become a cantaloupe at uh you know whatever happens to you out in the roads so you know the streets are dangerous you got to make sure that you protect yourself from the streets um and a helmet will do that anyway guys that's it for today's video i'm losing my voice already um i'll see you guys on the next one deuces Beep.